Hey everyone, we're back for Masters of the Universe review, easily the biggest MOTU release of the season. Of course, that is the Super 7 holiday version of He-Man that we have packaged in, I mean, maybe the best packaging of the year as far as I'm concerned. There's a lot going on inside of this uh, wrapping paper here. So we've got what has been the topic of conversation lately because a lot of people wanted Santa He-Man, Santa Prince Adam. They wanted this guy. They wanted Skeletor with Relay. Uh, and that's not what we got. We got the He-Man with a Santa hat with a candy cane sword. So there is some stuff to talk about here. Uh, maybe some dashed expectations as well. But I am pretty excited to take a look at this guy. Not necessarily just because of the figure within, but because because of the packaging here, because we have to talk about the box and this wrapping paper. So Super 7 went all out on packaging for this release, and they have given us this vintage Earl Norum uh, He-Man artwork from the 80s that just, I mean, this screams He-Man, screams Christmas. This is the best packaging I think I've seen in a very long time. They went to a great, great deal of trouble to package these so that you can just you know, kind of rip one piece of tape and you can pull the figure out, but then you can put it right back in and not destroy this amazing paper. I really do need them to sell this by the roll. If you're listening, Super 7, Brian Flynn, let's do this. We all want this. But what's interesting here is not necessarily just the artwork because the artwork is amazing. I mean, there's tons of stuff going on here. Clamp Champ with a sleigh. We've got She-Ra and Extendar uh, decorating the tree. But you can pop this thing open and of course we have a mailer inside. So this guy is covering the mailer and this was actually covered in bubble wrap which was inside another outer mailer shell. So they went to good, good lengths to protect this. So we've got the mailer and then inside that we have got the Club Grayskull style slip cover which is done up with a snow theme. So they've changed that up a bit. And then on the inside, you can see the figure done up in a snowy castle gray skull. We have got a snowman orco on the side. And then the back of the box has got a holiday themed He-Man done up in filmation artwork style. So there's a lot going on here. Even if you leave them in the package, there is a lot of cool stuff to look at on this one. But we're going to do it. We're going to pull them out. So let's take a look. All right, guys, here we go. Holiday He-Man out of the package. And this is an interesting figure for a number of reasons, not just because of the fact that he is you know, one kind of unexpected variant figure that we got, not to mention an unexpected figure in general, because it's definitely not what a lot of people thought we were getting because of the hype that was built up around this, or what a lot of people really wanted to get. I just, I don't know what Super 7 was thinking in terms of hyping this up. I really think that was the fatal flaw with this figure, is that they shouldn't have teased it the way they did. But the time has come, and we have the figure here. And I gotta say, there is some interesting stuff going on here, and there is definitely some weird stuff going on here as well. So we're going to take a look at all the normal stuff first. We'll take a look at articulation. I don't think you're going to be surprised here. There is one great improvement on this figure, which I think we're going to see in the ultimate uh, ultimate filmation He-Man down the road. But let's run through it real quick. And of course, we'll start at the head. So we've got a ball peg so he can look up, he can look down, he can bobble side to side a little bit, and then he can rotate pretty much any direction. Arms go out, can rotate, bicep cut, single jointed elbow, and then we've got rotation and hinges at the wrist. And just like the Laughing Prince Adam, they still do not have the vertical hinge on these hands. They have the horizontal hinge. So, you know, the whole point of that hinge was with the original filmation He-Man was to make him be able to hold his sword aloft better. And they still have not done that. They've got to keep that joint there, which is a bit of a bummer. We've got a crunch so he can go forward, he can go back. Yeah, he can go forward a little bit more. I knew there was something else missing there. So he can go forward pretty far. Uh, we do, of course, have a waist twist. Legs go out. They kick forward. They kick back. You can uh, cut up there. We've got a single jointed knee. We do have a shin swivel. We have got the updated ankle, so you don't have that ugly joint there anymore because that's the fatal flaw in the original Filmation He-Man. You've got rocker and you've got hinge down there. So it's exactly what you expect to get, except for the fact that they still have not gone back to fix this particular wrist joint. Now, as far as the overall look and feel of this figure, that's where things become a little wonky, so to speak. We do, of course, have, you know, just your standard Filmation He-Man. So we've seen this figure before from Mattel, and we know we're getting an ultimate version from Super 7 next year, 2019 at some point. 
There is some changes, though. This isn't exactly that same Mattel figure. This is, just like with the Laughing Prince Adam figure, this is the same lower half that's on that body. So this is the different loincloth, uh, like Triclop Triclops uses the same loincloth, the Filmation Triclops, and he's got the same boots that that Laughing Prince Adam has. That isn't inherently an issue. Perfectly fine with that. You know, we've got the, the rubbery harness. We've got a holster on his back or a sheath for the sword, and we'll talk about the sword in, in a minute. Uh, for the most part, what paint apps are on this figure are pretty decent. I do have a smudge on the Iron Cross on his chest, which isn't really a big deal for me personally. The paint apps are minimal at best, and we once again have a situation where the plastic is definitely not the same that we're used to. And that's really because of the fact that we have a true comparison figure for this. We have the original Mattel Filmation He-Man, and it's really a night and day difference, and I will do a comparison between that and then, of course, Laughing Prince Adam as well. But this is, again, your standard uh, He-Man style, you know, almost naked body. Sculpt is there. It's very filmation -y. Minimal details, minimal painting, which is fine. Kind of goes with the theme. It's what we expect to get at this. The big change, of course, for this particular figure is going to be, though, above the neck, and that is the head. All right, now here's the main event, though, for this figure. When it comes to Filmation He-Man, the face is really where it's kind of brought to life, where you really know that you're dealing with a Filmation figure, because for the most part, the body is just kind of a dumbed-down version of the Classics figure, which is fine, and they're very similar. So the head is where you really get all of those details. This is a new head sculpt. Uh, Brian, Flynn, Brian Flynn confirmed as much on Instagram, just to, just to be sure about it, that this is a new head sculpt. The hat's not removable, which was kind of the dead giveaway, which I'm perfectly fine with as well. The hat looks really nice. It very much adds a cartoony vibe to it. The hair, of course, is really, really nicely done as well. Very much in that filmation style. Just kind of a solid color with a bunch of lines in there. And the hat is nicely done. It just hangs well. It's it's solid. It doesn't really move or anything. It is rubbery at the back, but it doesn't do anything in that regard. Where we have some issues, though, is the actual face. I have a couple gripes here, and I do think that when you're looking straight on, it's kind of weird. When you're looking at it from the side, it looks a little better. So certain angles, it kind of reflects flex He-Man a little bit better, but I think we have a few issues here. For one, it is gaunt. It looks really, really sunken in, and I think it needs a layer of paint on it. Which leads to my next problem, the fact that the face color, the plastic on it, is not the same color as the body. They are different. They're similar, but they are different. And I've tried to look at it in as many different lighting sources as possible, and it's definitely not exactly the same color. And then we have the gloss. It's glossy again, just like the sorceress face was. It's glossy, and that's definitely causing some issues. Paint on him is really minimal, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, except for the fact that I think the whole face should have been painted. So we've just got eyebrows, we've got the eyes, and then we've got the we've got the teeth painted, which they're pretty decent. I don't have any QC issues or anything like that. But I do think that in general, this, when compared to the Mattel figure, and it's hard not to do that comparison with this figure, when compared to that figure, they do not really look alike at all. And it definitely concerns me for the upcoming Filmation Ultimate He-Man. Now, as far as accessories goes, we, of course, just have the one. We have got just a repaint of the Filmation Power Sword that we have gotten a couple times now. We got it with Laughing Prince Adam. We got it with the, the original Filmation He-Man. So this is another one of the holiday-themed accessories. So we got a candy cane striped sword here. And I'm fine with this. You know, I think I would have been, I think I would have been a little unhappy if all we got was just the Santa hat. You know, I know, again, this isn't the figure a lot of people thought we were getting or maybe wanted, but to have another accessory kind of drive it home really does help tie the package together a little bit more. Whether it's one you really care about or not, I think it's executed pretty well. It's a pearly, it's kind of a pearly white plastic with uh, with the kind of, they're not exactly dark, dark red, but kind of uh, a pinky red color that are striped along there, and I think it's executed pretty well. So I like the idea behind it, and it works well with, you know, this whole idea. And like I mentioned, here is a comparison between what we have so far in terms of Filmation He-Men. So we've got our Laughing Prince Adam, we've got our Holiday He-Man, and we've got the original Mattel version of Filmation He-Man. And I mean, there's not really a lot to compare about with this one. He has the same lower half, which works fine. It's well enough. Uh, I still think that I would prefer this type of loincloth, but I'm okay with that. It doesn't really do anything for me one way or the other. But there is, of course, a lot to compare about when we talk about these two. So I'm going to pull them in and we'll talk about them individually. 
So here they are side by side, and I think the differences in the face, I mean, it has to be night and day. There is really no comparison between these two. There is very little similarities between these two faces. And I really do think a lot of it comes down to the fact that this guy is not painted, and I really, really wish it was. It has the same kind of effect as the mini comic Prince Adam figure had. There was a lot of issues with those faces because there was no paint on them, because they were hyper-glossy, things like that. The figures themselves, though, very much look close. We do, of course, have different lower halves. The uh, armor is a different shade of gray. And then one thing that's definitely different is that the uh, holster, the sheath on the back of the original one, could rotate. This one cannot. It is actually glued into place. So it's always going to be sticking over like that, which isn't necessarily an issue, but it is, of course, a difference. And it's something, it's just something to note. It's glued down onto the back there. So it doesn't twist. It doesn't move. You can't really do anything different with it. So I'm not sure if that's a really a fair thing to complain about because it's just a holster on his back, but it is a difference to note. Beyond that, though, the big thing is, of course, the head sculpt on this thing. It's not terrible, but it's definitely not the same, and it's certainly not up to snuff when you compare it against this figure. This is still the definitive Filmation He-Man. There's no, no doubt about it. So overall, this is an interesting package, to say the least. I love the changes to the actual box, the Filmation-style slipcover, the Filmation box itself. The wrapping paper idea, whoever came up with that idea needs a raise, because that's the best thing I've seen in quite a while. The artwork is amazing. The actual quality of the wrapping paper itself is super, super high. It's, it's incredibly good. It's very thick. It's nice. Uh, but that idea is really fantastic. The figure itself, though, definitely has its issues, like I've mentioned, with the plastic changes still, the glossy face, the sculpt being kind of weird, lack of paint, things like that. That stuff is my problem. The idea behind the figure, I think, is all right. It's he man in a Santa hat with a candy cane sword. I'm fine with that. Sure, I would have loved to have gotten Santa He-Man, Santa Prince Adam, or Skeletor with Relay, but this works for me too. The idea behind it is still solid. I just think we have a miss here in terms of execution, because when you put him next to the original Mattel Filmation He-Man, it's really hard to compare the two. They're just in different leagues still, which is definitely a disappointment. But that's going to do it for this look at the Super 7 Holiday He-Man figure. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and until next time.